everyone and welcome aboard the SV Californica. Uh, as you can see from the smile on my face, I'm here at one of my favorite places on the entire world. Uh, this is Catalina Island. And so I'm here currently on a mooring in Isthmus Cove at Two Harbors. And today we're gonna go ashore and try to find all the plants and animals that we can show you uh, the natural world around here at, at the Isthmus. So I got my kayak blown up and we're gonna go row ashore and check out a uh, coastal bluff, also known as an island bluff or sea bluff, and look for one of our target plant species, a island live forever, or Catalina Island live forever. And also known as Dudleya virens, subspecies Hassii. And then we are gonna go uh, over to a salt marsh on the backside of Catalina um, at Cat Harbor. And we are going to look for a island loggerhead shrike, a really cool bird. And um, from there, we're gonna hike up to through the coastal sage scrub, although there's not a lot of sage there, so it's technically a coastal uh, scrub or an island scrub. And we're gonna look for an example of uh, gigantism that is a phenomenon on islands. And it's called a St. Catherine's Lace or Areogonum giganteum. And um, this is a type of buckwheat, an Areogonum, and that'll be one of our target species as well. Then we're gonna keep hiking uh, through some um, coastal or uh, some island chaparral and then down to a uh, island woodland. And this species we're gonna look for here that's dominant in this woodland is a native cherry, um, also known as um, Prunus alyssifolia, subspecies Lyonii, or an, an endemic Catalina Island cherry. So that is actually what gave the name to Cherry Cove here at, at the Isthmus. So uh, yeah, I'm real excited, so uh, let's go ashore. All right, I got my kayak all inflated and about to row ashore. And uh, let's hope I don't drop everything in the water or else uh, that'd be the end of the video. All right, here we go. So here we are at the Sea Bluff, or a uh, coastal island bluff habitat. And right away we found our, our target species. So right here is one of my favorite genuses. This is uh, Dudleya, also known as the Live Forevers. But this particular one is a Catalina Island Live Forever, also known as Dudleya virens, subspecies Hassii. So there are other subspecies on the island. Uh, here on the side facing more towards the mainland is Dudleya hassii and on the back side is actually one that has a little bit larger leaf and um, uh, has like a surfboard shaped uh, leaf. That one is called Dudleya virens subspecies insularis. So there are some differences um, of the Dudleyas here in some speciation even occurring on the island. But right here we can see it's getting a lot of wind, it's getting a lot of salt, it's um, really shallow if any real soil and so these plants have adapted to cling onto that cliff um, and also be able to um, to live so one way to do that is through succulents so this is the dudleya it's able to have real shallow roots that cling onto the cliff face and then also store water and nutrients um, into its real thick succulent like leaves um, but here next to it is a really cool plant this is an island buckwheat um, also known as Areogonum grande, variety grande. Uh, there is another variety called uh, variety rubescence that occurs on the other island that has a real beautiful red flower. I have it in my garden, I love it. Um, but here you can see it's got uh, that buck buckwheat-like flower um, or inflorescence with the multiple flowers and, uh, and, and a nice pink, pinkish cream color. Uh, the Dudleya has that succulent um, or sunscreening on it that that this little chalk that's able to help it with uh, sun and the UV rays, but also protected it also from insects as well that might not like being um, uh, 
to eat this plant in particular. So I was really hesitant to include Dudleya in the, uh, as one of my target species and really show kind of where they are because um, this plant is technically rare, it's a rare species, but Dudleya has been poached pretty heavily in the last few years uh, to supply international markets in the succulent trade. And so it's really sad how, how these plants have been just stolen out of the wild and uprooted and harvested and just as decimation, if not, could potentially make a lot of these rarer deadly as extinct. Um, but I, I wanted to, to bring awareness to this issue. And then also, um, you know, sh there has been a law passed uh, or a bill that was passed. It's now illegal with some heavy penalties for poaching these plants in the wild. So um, you have a, there's a, a mandatory at least at least six months in jail for, for catching if you're caught poaching and also no less than five thousand dollar fine per plant that was stolen so a lot of these plants are being stole uh harvested out of the wild by the tens of thousands at a time which just does decimation to these populations so part of my master's work uh in response to this issue was to grow these plants in large numbers and that way we could increase the supply while decreasing the demand and stop that poaching incentive by making this, these rare plants actually more ubiquitous in the commercial trade, um, ethically grown. And that's what we've been doing um, at the nursery. So uh, here it is, Dudleya uh, virens, um, subspecies Hassii, just doing its thing um, in the wild. And there seems to be a healthy population. So we're, we're, we're happy for that. All right, right now I'm walking from Isthmus Cove at Two Harbors over to Cat Harbor on the backside of the island. So why it's called Two Harbors is because, well one, there are two harbors here connected by an isthmus. So what an isthmus is, is it's a small strip of land uh, connecting two larger bodies of land. So we have the east and west end of the island and, uh, and it's surrounded by two bodies of water. So. Behind me is Isthmus Cove, uh, where two harbors and all the restaurants are. And then we're walking over to another place you can get moorings and anchorages on the backside of the island at Cat Harbor. And so this is another really cool um, place I want to eventually get a mooring. But uh, yeah, it's an Isthmus. It's just a, a short walk and you can get to both sides of the island. So we're walking over to the salt marsh and I'm thinking I see the loggerhead shrike right here just dive into the bushes uh, or into the grassland here and probably be picking up an insect or a lizard or something but um, you see there's a bunch of uh, cactus over here a puntia littoralis also known as a uh, coastal prickly pear the island shrike is a really cool or shrikes in general they're murderous birds and what they do is they actually will grab their prey and impale them onto some sort of sharks sharp spike so either that's one of these cactus spines or even on barbed wire um, but it's it's a pretty interesting bird we'll see if we can get it closer on film so one thing i want to do with this channel is try to get people excited about native plants and the island and the species and where they occur in the wild uh, but, and I try not to bum you out with too much of the conservation, which really is important though to bring awareness to. So all the trees you see in two harbors is primarily not native. So a lot of these really tall trees are eucalyptus uh, from Australia and uh, other parts of the older world, um, not here in the Americas. Uh, the other one are there's two species of palms so brought in to the islands to give kind of that beach paradise feel as a uh, destination but the real large ones you see are called uh, canary island palms from the canary islands or phoenix uh, canariensis the other you see are these real tall uh, skinny ones those are washingtonia robusta or uh, mexican fan palms so down in i think more subtropics of mexico uh, but there are no native 
palms that occur here on the Channel Islands. There are some down in Baja and Guadalupe. Uh, there's some native palms there, but um, nothing that occurs here naturally. But there are a lot of really cool native trees that occur on the island, so we're gonna keep hiking and see if we can go find those. So just outside of Two Harbors is a landmass out here, another island called Bird Rock. And there's a, a relative to hibiscus that only occurs on the island and that is the last remaining spot that it exists. It's called Malva Rosa or uh, Lavatera Um But it's a really cool plant with a big beautiful hibiscus like flower and unfortunately that's the last place it remains on Catalina Island. I think there's some on the Channel Islands up north, uh, some different species or I think subspecies of it and down in, um, on San Clemente Island as well. But yeah, here on Catalina Island, Bird Rock is the last remaining spot for Malva Rosa. All right, so we just hiked a little bit and went to the next cove over, which is 4th of July Cove. And this is ran by the uh, uh, 4th of July Yacht Club here, where they have moorings available. Uh, but the habitat quickly changes. So you can see this dense stand all right here and up on the hills above me. Uh, it's all this chemise, and chemise is an indicative plant of an island chaparral, or just chaparrals in general. You'll see chemise in different species, even on the mainland. Um, but above me as well, there's a lot of toyon, more of that chemise, um, and also some scrub oaks as well, some island scrub oaks or Quercus pacifica. So one thing that really impacts the habitat type is the angle that the slope of that habitat is on. So behind me, the island chaparral is getting uh, less exposure on a north facing slope than on this south facing slope here. And so you're seeing completely different plant types and their different adaptations. So uh, the ones that are getting much more sun exposure on these south facing slopes is the uh, uh, the coastal sage scrub or island scrub. And that you'll start to see more sagebrush. You're seeing here Artemisia uh, californica. And then also our target species here, Areogonum giganteum. So this is the St. Catherine's lace. And you can tell it's a really dry year because this would be a much more bigger display. Um, but we're right here in summer, so these plants are exhibiting what's called uh, drought deciduousness. So a lot of these plants are really shutting down photosynthesis and not um, doing a lot of their uh, metabolism and using water and things like that. It's an adaptation to get through these drier summer months and also has a, a glaucous color or this silvery kind of shine to it that also helps it with that sun exposure. So. In my garden that gets a lot more supplemental water, this thing is just out of control. Huge, huge flowers display, huge leaves. Um, it's about a five foot or more uh, shrub uh, by its width, and it's just getting tons of flowers for, for pollinators, native bees, butterflies, and then those seeds also for um, uh, a lot of uh, birds as well. So here it is, our target species, Areogonum giganteum, uh, St. Catherine's Lace. So also, on the islands, there's, an exam there's a phenomenon called gigantism. So gigantism occurs here because there's less, uh, there's no real herbivores that would be eating it, so that pressure has been released from the plant, and it's able to have much larger uh, leaves and flowers and do more photosynthesis. So we'll see it again, another example of gigantism on uh, the island cherry, the Catalina Island cherry. But I say that, that it's evolved to not have that uh, herbivores here on the island. However, now with deer and um, uh, feral ungulates and even the bison are causing a lot of damage to these native uh, ecosystems on the island. So uh, without really getting rid of a lot of them, there's a lot of these plants are gonna really, really suffer. So um, they just haven't evolved with those type of animals. So that being said, here is a great example of Areogonum giganteum, the St. Catherine's lace. All right, so we're entering down into Cherry Cove, which transitions into more of a island woodland. And behind me, I have a really rare tree 
that is endemic only to Catalina Island. This is the Catalina Ironwood, also known as Lianothamnus floribundus, subspecies floribundus. There is another uh, subspecies in the horticultural trade that's often confused as Catalina Ironwood. That's subspecies Asplenifolius, also known as a fern leaf ironwood, and that one has more of a fern-like leaf. This one, this subspecies that only occurs on the channel on Catalina Island is a straight leaf, and that is Floribundus subspecies Floribundus. Now, as that species name uh, and both subspecies will have a very abundant flower display, uh, it is a member of the rose family, and so it has these really beautiful white with little red centered flowers uh, and this big display and bundles up on this tree. Now it is a dry year, so it looks like it hasn't really been putting out a whole lot of flowers, but here it is existing just beautifully overlooking Cherry Cove. Um, it's a really, really rare and really cool tree. This is Lianothamnus floribundus, subspecies floribundus, the Catalina ironwood. All right, so here we are in an island woodland and surrounded by a whole bunch of our target species. This is the Catalina Island Cherry, also known as Prunus alicifolia subspecies Lyonii. It used to be just Prunus Lyonii, but they broke it into two species, uh, subspecies. So there is a related other subspecies on the mainland called Holly Leaf Cherry, and that one uh, is very similar. Also gets the, it's a cherry and a prunus, and it uh, only maxes up about probably around 12 feet or so, 10, sometimes maybe a little bit higher, but around that 10 foot large shrub. But here on the island, it exhibits gigantism, that, that island phenomenon. And you can see they get into the huge trees uh, up to, a, sometimes even up to 40 feet tall. Uh, but there's a huge grove of them here in the namesake of Cherry Cove. Uh, we're not going to go down into the grove uh, because that is uh, the Boy Scouts of America and, uh, summer camp, and so we don't want to trespass there. But you can see even the leaf is just huge leaf um, and exhibiting that, uh, that gigantism. And also, we're a little early, and it is a dry year, so typically it will have a lot of these little yellow uh, flower inflorescence that give way to a edible uh, cherry. Um, it does have uh, cyanide in the, the seed, but uh, the, the birds and things can eat that without actually digesting the cyanide itself. So um, it's an important bird plant here on the island, and it's likely how it got here to the island is by by birds, um, but I've also read it's possible that it could be uh, a relic of, of the island as it shifted from the, the continent. So um, here we are with a beautiful grove of our target species. This is the Catalina Island Cherry, or Prunus alicifolia subspecies Lyonii. All right, I want to thank you all for joining us on today's hike of two harbors and uh, I hope you learned something about you know island biogeography and some unique evolutionary traits of gigantism that occurs with some of the species here out on the islands and uh, yeah please hit that like and subscribe button and uh, let me know where else you'd like me to explore. Um, I plan to do a lot more exploration of the Channel Islands especially here at Catalina and uh, we'll take uh, Californica, we'll take her around and we'll hit other anchorages and other unique spots uh, here on the island. So until next time, thank you all for joining.